What's up guys? In this video I'm going to show you an extremely good mob grinder design in Minecraft. But quickly before we go, please remember to leave a rating and a comment, that helps me out a lot. And if you really enjoy, consider subscribing, but that's all, so let's get into the video. So first I'm quickly going to show you how the farming itself works. It's fully automatic, although you can make it as an XP grinder as well. Although I'm going to be teaching you especially the automatic design. So you're going to be using magma blocks to kill all the mobs. And then underneath here, all the magic happens. You basically have a minecart running around. I don't know what happened to my glass. But basically this minecart just gathers everything from up here and then stores it in this chest. As you can see, I think it's only been maybe like 5-10 minutes of farming. This design is really, really working well, let's be honest. For the quick, more technical part, how this thing works is basically you have this little mechanism that goes off around every 25 seconds or so, and then it sends a signal to spill water in here, and this signal is repeat up here, up here, and up to the top. So on every layer where mobs have already spawned, there is going to be water spilling and forcing the mobs to fall in here, and they are going to get gathered in here and die to the uh, magma blocks. It basically uses observers, you may be familiar with this design, but because of some changes, uh, the old design does not work anymore, you have to use slabs or fences or signs or something like this in here, otherwise it all gets messed up, it work, works really, really, really bad. So yeah, I updated the design and made it work really, really well with newer versions. And last but not least, of course at the top you have this little, uh, what should I call it, like a roof, which makes it so the light on all the levels is enough for the mobs to spawn, it's not too light basically. I mean, the sun is right there, but... In Minecraft, the sun is treated as if it was up into the sky, like up there. So if you make a roof like this, basically everywhere here there's lighting of 7 or less, which lets mob spawn when, of course, the water is not turned on, like it is right now. Check this out. The signal is traveling up, and it's all dry now. So that's basically how it works from the uh, technical point of view. This gathering station is also really common, it's really simple, it basically uses a comparator and something like this, so you may be familiar with it, it's really simple as well, and I'm going to teach you how to build it, of course. Okay, so now for the building part. All the materials you will need and everything like this will be down in the description or in the comment, so if you want to see exactly how much blocks for anything you will need, then just refer to that comment. I'm not going to be talking about the numbers because th there's just a lot of numbers and it's going to be confusing, it's easier to just simply read. So check the description. So we're going to start at the bottom and I'm going to show you how to build each segment. I'm not going to be building like this whole thing, but I'm going to teach you how to build as many segments as you basically want. So first we have like the grinder chamber itself, it's basically a 3x3 three three of magma blocks, so it's really simple. And then you can use, actually I'm using glass because it just looks cooler, but of course you can use uh, any different non-transparent block, it's all fine. Uh, all you have to care about is just mobs not running away from this little spot. And this is your little chamber, 3x3. Three then the next thing you want to do is basically build 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 2 blocks like this away from the center and you want to do it on every side of this chamber. When you have your 4 T's like this, it's really simple, you just connect them with a diagonal line like this, basically, so it goes exactly this way, it doesn't go any further out, so as you can see it connects perfectly and then you simply just fill it with glass. So you want a diagonal line, then three blocks, then diagonal line, then three blocks, and so on around it. So when you finish, it should look like this. Yeah, three blocks, diagonal, three blocks, diagonal, and so on, and so on. So the next thing you want to do is basically you want to build a layer around it, like this, exactly. So you just don't want to cover any of those blocks, you want to build around them. You don't really need those blocks, but it's better to have them because the water is not going to be spilling everywhere when you eventually uh, get to placing water later. Okay, so when you're finished, it should look like this. Again, you don't want to cover any of the blocks, so it should still be three, then diagonal, then three, then diagonal, and so on. And just to make sure, you can just go down here 
and then you can easily see that you did not cover any blocks. Of course, you don't have to use glass. Glass is, uh, glass is again purely cosmetic. I just like looking at mobs flow. So now you will need water and you're going to place water three times in here like this. And in each of those spots, you're going to do the same thing like this. And then you're going to place water on all of these edges like this, basically. So now if you've done everything correctly, you should see water easily getting everywhere in here, but not flowing inside. So yeah, this looks fine to me. So this should work. And now you're basically finished with the catching part of the farm. So now we're going to build uh, the collecting part underneath the magma blocks. Again, for everything you're going to need, you can refer to the description or maybe a comment down below to see exactly the items you're going to need for this part. Okay, so now for the gathering part, you're going to build a little platform in here. So we're going to start with a three by three using any kind of block. We're going to replace it later. And now we're going to make a little platform in here like this. It's going to make everything a lot easier. So now what you want to do is you're going to place a chest in here. Then you want to place a hopper facing the chest like this. Then you need to replace those two blocks with redstone blocks like this. Okay, so now you're basically done with the floor and it's time to start placing rails. So first you want to place a powered one in here, then you're going to place three normal ones like this, a powered one in here, and then first you place a rail in here, and then you place this one, and then you just finish up with two powered ones like this. So you have an S. Then you can just build around it, but something you have to keep in mind is that this block has to be normal and this block has to be normal. You can't use glass or anything like this. Those have to be normal cobblestone, quartz or something. It can't be anything transparent. But other than that, glass is fine. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to finish it off with uh, opaque blocks like this. And you're basically done with this part. So now for the simple redstone part, you're basically going to place a comparator facing that way. So away from the hopper like this. Then you want to place a block in here, a redstone torch on the side of this block, a block above it, and a redstone repeater like this. And now it works fine. So let's just test it. Let's place a hopper minecart in here. As you can see, it's working correctly. But just to make sure that this part is working fine, we're going to go up here and we're going to drop a stack of items like this. And now, yeah, exactly. This should stop in here until it drops off all the items and then it should start running again. As you can see, it started moving again. And if it doesn't, then you probably did something wrong. So just repeat this step carefully. Okay, so now we're going to build a clock mechanism. So let's start, for example, with this block. Just choose one of the center blocks like this and build something like five blocks up. It's going to be fine, just don't make it too low. If it's a bit higher, then nothing is going to be wrong. So keep that in mind. Then just place another block in here and this is going to be your hopper base. So what you want to do now is let's place a block in here and then you want to place a hopper like this and another hopper facing the first one. So hopper into hopper. Next, you place a block in here and in here and you place redstone comparator facing away from the hopper again and the same here. Then you place a block like this and like this then redstone torch in here and in here. Then on top of the redstone torch, you place again a block and a torch in here and same in here like this. So it should look exactly like this. Then you're gonna use sticky pistons. You're going to place one in here and another one in here. And then you're going to place a redstone block in here or in here, it doesn't really matter. So you want basically something like this. Okay, so next you have to build from the center of your mob grinder like this, or you can just build from here, just make sure it's the exact center. And then you want this block to be at the same height as all of this. And then you place two blocks like this that are below this block. And then you finish it off with an observer that you're going to place exactly like this and to redstone like this. So now every time this piston updates, it should send a signal to this redstone and this redstone is going to send a signal to this block. So now the last thing you have to do 
is you have to run the clock. What I'm going to recommend you do is uh, get like 64 blocks, place it not in the one that has redstone in it, place it on the other one. And now the redstone blocks should start moving about every 25 seconds or so. So let's just see. It moved exactly, so this thing should be walking now. As you can see, the smooth stone is going from one hopper to another and then it's going to get reversed. And then this one, uh, this observer detects the change and sends a signal in here. So now this mechanism is done and your clock is done. So now for the second to last segment, it's going to be a thing that changed from the last design. This is going to be your layer. And I'm basically going to teach you how to build one layer and then you can just build as many layers as you want. You can build up to about 35. If you build more than this and you don't understand the spawning, they might just not work at all. You have to be at a specific position for more than 35 uh, layers to work for you. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this redstone so the grinder doesn't start walking before we want it to walk. And then you're going to place a dispenser facing up right on this block and then you're going to build exactly seven blocks in each direction like this. When you're finished it should look like this. So the next thing you need to do is you're going to fill it up again as a diagonal line. So first it's going to be six, then five, then four, three, two and one and you repeat this for every side. Now it should look exactly like this. The next thing you will place water in this dispenser then you're going to place a block above it, then an observer, so the redstone part should be looking like this. Uh, if it's to the side, just make sure to get as close to the block as possible and click as close to you as possible. So yeah, the arrow should be pointing upwards. And last, you break this block and replace it with a fence. You can also use like the cobblestone fence or a slab. But the good part about the fence is that you can still access the dispenser even after placing the fence. So it's just going to be easier to uh, just change something if you need to like take out water or something. And if you have a slab, you would have to break it, of course. So this is basically a one segment done. And if you want to build a next segment, you just start the same way. You place a dispenser, then you build seven to each side and so on and so on. But you have to remember that before you turn everything on, you should light every one of those layers so nothing spawns, especially creepers, because then they can blow up your mechanism and basically mess you up. So I just built another layer and the last layer doesn't need a fence or the observer. So something like this as a last layer is going to be fine. Okay, so now time for the last part, the roof. And this time it's going to require a little explanation because basically you can build up to 35. But what, uh, what I expect most people to do is probably build like four, six or something like this because it takes a lot of resources and a lot of time. And if you build a roof like right in here, every time you want to add new layers, you will have to break your roof. So what you can do and what I recommend you do is basically go as high as you can, probably at least like 100 blocks, 150 or something like this, and then build a roof. But something to keep in mind, then you have to light up the last layer. So if this is my last layer, it's not going to be spawnable. You should destroy it. You should replace it with a normal block and you should lit it up. Basically, the problem is that if you don't have your roof right above the last layer, Enderman can spawn because you have more than two blocks in here. You have three blocks and even more if the layer is 100 blocks above you. And if the Enderman spawn, they are going to start taking apart your farm. They are going to be taking blocks. And it's basically going to mess everything up. So you need to be careful. If you build a roof much higher than your last level, you have to light up your last level and you have to basically turn it off and make it as a protection from Enderman and not a layer that walks. Okay, so now I built up to the uh, layer that actually my last farm uh, had roof on. So basically now the roof is a little bit different than your last layer. Basically the difference is that instead of building seven blocks, you build 14. So you're going to build 14 blocks in each direction. When you finish, it should look like something like this. I actually made this form a little bit too close to the other ones, so they are overlapping in there, but it shouldn't be a big deal in this case. So now again, you want to draw a diagonal line, but instead of three blocks being here, you just want one. 
So you just basically do something like this and draw a line like this between all of the blocks. And again, when you're finished, it should look like this, a straight diagonal line with one block at each end. And then you basically want to fill it in again and light it up. And your finished last layer basically looks like this. So instead of using torches, you can also use uh, slabs that are on the lower part of the block instead of the top one because it also makes it unspawnable. But this one is basically just more simple, especially for the, uh, for the beginners that may get confused uh, on how to place slabs correctly. So now all there is left to do is to activate your farm. As you can see, if I take off the torches from this layer, mobs can spawn in here. But again, the problem is Enderman could also spawn in here. So that's why you want to make your last layer not spawnable. You just want to make it as a protection for this layer. So the Enderman can spawn in here. So let's just break the torches. And let's just check, is the water in here? Yeah, it is. Let's check the lighting with F3. As you can see, sky 7 and so on, sky 7 and so on. So it's all fine and good. Everything can spawn in here. Yeah, exactly. And now all you have to do is place this redstone in here and just wait for it to start walking. As you can see, the piston just moved and the water went out of the dispenser. So now let's just wait a second to see if the water retracts, if the water gets back into the dispenser correctly. And again, as you can see, the water got back into the dispenser and everything is fine. So your farm right now is working correctly. So now all that there is left to be said is that you have to be at least 24 blocks from each layer where mobs can spawn so they can spawn. Otherwise, if you're too close, then the mobs won't spawn at all. And if you're more than 128 blocks from any of the layers, then nothing will spawn there either. So what I recommend you do is like see where this is and go about 24 blocks in this direction and just wait for mobs to spawn and just visit the pickup chest and everything like this from time to time. Of course, as always, if you have any problems with the farm or I didn't make something clear enough, let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to help anyone, provide screenshots if need be, guidance and everything that I can do to help. So I guess that's going to be it for this video. Again, please remember to leave a rating and a comment because that helps me out a lot. You don't even know how much. And if you really enjoyed, consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. But thanks for watching and I hope to see you around.